Welcome to Bethel Church. You found us on uh, internet, on YouTube, and we are so glad that you're with us. And to the members of Bethel family, uh, we are excited because this is the weekend that we begin some in-person worship. So if you're at home watching it, your time is coming up really quick. And it's a, it's a big time for us. It's a big moment. And we're glad that you're able to join us and to be part of our family. And if you are just visiting us this morning, uh, maybe consider stopping on by, getting, letting us get to know you as well. It's Father's Day, so during the first part of the worship, we'll have prayers and litanies that really focus on God as our Father. And we'll be praying for our fathers as well. So we start off with, a, with an opening prayer. And it's entitled, Fathers in Our Lives by Reverend Chuck Curie. So let's pray. We give thanks, Creator God, for the fathers in our lives. Fatherhood does not come with a manual, and reality teaches us that some fathers excel while others fail. We ask for your blessings for them all, and for forgiveness where it's needed. This Father's Day, we remember the many sacrifices fathers make for their children and families, and the ways, both big and small, they lift children to achieve dreams, though thought beyond reach. And so too, we remember all those who have helped fill the void when fathers pass early or are absent, grandfathers and uncles, brothers and cousins, teachers, pastors and coaches, and the women of our families. And for those who are fathers, we ask for wisdom and humility in the face of the task of parenting. Give them the strength to do well by their children and by you. In your holy name, O oh God, we pray. Amen. And we begin with a call to worship. And, and God is wherever you are. So if you are going to be worshiping here, uh, God is here. And we, even as we tape this, we know that God is with us right now. But God is there in your homes with you as well. Wherever God's people are, God is as well. So he calls us to worship. Come, sing praises to God. Rejoice in his presence, for he is our God, a father to the fatherless and the defender of all who need protection, the one in whom the lonely find the home and the prisoner finds release. Bless the Lord, the God of our salvation, who sustains and strengthens us day after day. Let's worship God together. And as we worship God, we, we also ask for God's blessing. And God blesses us with these words from Scripture. May grace, may mercy, and may peace be yours today and always from God our Father and Jesus the Christ. Through the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit now and always. Amen. And as we've, as we've received God's blessing... Maybe turn to whoever you are worshiping with and just offer them God's blessings as well. So may God bless you this morning, Peter. And you also. And, well, thank you to, you to you as well. And to Adam and to Cindy who are here with us as well. A, a blessings to you also. We come into a time where, where we look for God's grace. As a church, we are a church who, who've committed to follow Jesus. We, we love each other. We serve our community. We, we share our faith in Jesus Christ. But we often get sidetracked as well. And sometimes we do it deliberately. Sometimes we just seem to kind of fall into it. And we call that sin. Because God calls us to live a certain way, to be a certain people. Jesus showed us how to be a certain people and, and continued that teaching that God gave us in the Old Testament. But in all truth, we find it real easy to make ourselves the center of, of our lives and of, of our attention rather than God. So as part of our worship, we turn to God and we say, you know, we really messed up bad. We sinned. 
And we don't deserve forgiveness, but we do desire it. And we want to be made right with you. And we're thankful for Jesus Christ who makes us right with our Father. But there is something in the confessing and hearing words of hope uh, that, that reassure our hearts, that commit us once again to living as God has called us to live as well. So we come into a time of confession be using Psalms 51 and Psalm 103. And Peter will start us off. Have mercy on me, O God, because of your unfailing love. Because of your great compassion, blot out the stain of my sins. Our God is merciful and gracious, slow to get angry, and full of unfailing love. Wash me clean from my guilt. Purify me from my sin. For I recognize my shameful deeds. They haunt me day and night. God will not constantly accuse us nor remain angry forever. Against you and you alone have I sinned. I have done what is evil in your sight. You will be proved right in what you say and your judgment against me is just. God has not punished us for all our sins, nor does he deal with us as we deserve. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. I was born a sinner from the moment my mother conceived me. God is like a father to his children, tender and compassionate to those who fear him. For he understands how weak we are. He remembers that we are only dust. You desire honesty from the heart. Teach me to be wise in my inmost being. For our days on earth are like grass. Like wildflowers we bloom and die. And the wind blows and we're gone, as though we had never been there. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and make me willing to obey you. For the love of the Lord remains forever with those who fear him. His salvation extends to the children's children of those who are faithful to his covenant. Those who obey his commandments. The sacrifice you want is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. Our God is merciful and gracious. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And because our God is so merciful and gracious, because we know in our hearts that we don't deserve it, but it is out of God's great grace and, and love for us out of Jesus' amazing sacrifice that we are made right with God and with each other. So we turn to God and we say, God, how do you want us to live? Who do you want us to be as your people? And we find God's law summarized in Mark 12 by Jesus. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. And the second is like this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no greater commandment than these. Sounds so easy to love. But in reality, love takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of commitment. And part of God's love for us is he says, I want to stay in contact with you. I want to stay connected with you. And that's why he calls us to, to come to him regularly in prayer. So we have an opportunity to come to our, our Lord in prayer as a congregation. Uh, we have a couple of things that we will be praying for. Uh, we'll be praying for uh, the, the gift of leadership, for for those who have been asked to allow their names to stand as elders and deacons, we're praying for, for Femi. 
Just over a week ago, her grandson Travis went home to the Lord and left behind a, a wife and a child. And just the other day was the funeral as well. And there is great sorrow, but also great trust and uh, in the Lord as well. So we will, we will ask the Lord to be close to them. Continue to pray for Henry and for Steve and for Jordan and Amy as well. So let's come to our Lord in prayer. We praise you, God, our Creator, for your handiwork in shaping and sustaining your wondrous creation. Lord, in Scripture, we learn that, that you created everything and everything was created good and very good. But you also notice that, that, that the first man was, was alone and so you created a, a woman. And, and Lord, you created us for relationships, for companionship, for, for being together. We're not meant to be alone. And Lord, this is why we also praise you and give thanks for, for our families and, and for our church family. And Lord, you reveal yourself as a father. We give you thanks for that. Again, the closeness of relationship that, that you want with us is like that of a, a father and, and his family. And Lord, we pray for fathers. We pray that, that Lord, as fathers, we might, we might love as you love without conditions. But that we also might show our love in, in modeling how you would have us live. And then helping us to, to walk alongside our, our children, to walk alongside our spouses as well, to help them know who you want them to be, to help them become who you have created them to be. Lord, to be a blessing to them as you are a blessing to us. We thank you. Uh, for particular blessings coming to us in this day. And, and Lord, we are all in different places. You bless us in different ways according to, to who we are and what we need. And we thank you for all those little things in our day and in our lives that, that you give us to remind us of who you are and of your love. But also those calls to to stay obedient, to stay focused on you, to, to be your presence in the neighborhoods, in the jobs, wherever you've placed us, to help us, help us, help others to know you as well. Lord, we give thanks for the gifts of creative vision and, and skillful craft. Lord, we, we see evidence around that all uh, around us all over the place. Lord, yesterday I, I give thanks for being able to just stop in at the farmer's market and to see the, the handiwork of so many of the craftspeople in our community. And then as when walking uh, in the area to see the handiwork and the craftsmanship of, uh, of yourself through through the trees and the, and the flowers, through just how this whole world is put together. And then looking at individual people and realizing each of them was created by you, was formed by you, shaped by you, in your image. And we give thanks. We give thanks for the gifts of, of leadership. We pray for those who are considering to, to uh, uh, you're called to stand as an elder or a deacon at this time in Bethel. We pray that you will make your call clear in their hearts and in their souls. And that this might be a, a time where they eagerly look to, uh, to, to follow you and to help Bethel to follow you as well. We pray for we pray for all humanity. You're our Savior. And, and you claim us through your love in Jesus Christ for the whole world. And, and you, commit, you commit yourself to us and you ask us to commit ourselves to care for those around us in your Son's name. 
And so we, we especially pray for, for those who continue to work for the benefit of others, especially those who do the unseen and unnoticed work that make our lives so much easier. We give thanks for their work and service. We pray for those who, who can't work today. Lord, many have lost jobs, they've been laid off, or, or perhaps their business has closed because of this time. Lord, there are many who desire to be able to support their families and, uh, and their loved ones through, through their work and through their labor. And Lord, they're just finding it hard. And we pray that you will uh, strengthen our economy once again so that those who desire to work are able to find work. We pray for those who teach and those who learn at the end of the school year. We give thanks for how flexible and, and how creative and, and how committed our, our teachers and staff and faculty are at our schools. And Lord, we, we pray that as they enter into a time of rest, a time of looking ahead to, to next fall already even, that this will be a time of rest for their souls, a, a time where you pour into them and, and they may come to know your presence and they may, they may also be inspired by, by you as well to, to know that you have used them in a special way to be a constant presence in the students' lives, to be a presence of hope and of, uh, of caring. We pray for the students that they too may have a, a restful uh, summer as well, that they may explore different things, that their learning's not done, but learning is just done in a different way as they, as they play and as they explore, uh, and as they learn more about you through the creation and through the people around them. Pray for the poor. There are many who are struggling now. We pray that we may have eyes to see and, and, and ears to hear and hearts to respond as a church community. Uh, to those in, in our community that you've placed in our lives, that we might be, that we might reach out with your, yeah, with your blessing, with your help. Lord, we don't always need to wait for them to come to us. Lord, may we be proactive as your people in our community. We pray for those who are sick and suffering. We think of Femi and, and her family especially as as they mourn the, 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 the death of, of Travis. And Lord, they're comforted by knowing his love for you and his commitment for you. And that gives them a sense of peace, but Lord, there's still that loss, there's still that hurt. So may you fill them and surround them with your comfort and with your peace. We pray for, for Henry and Steve and for Jordan and Amy. Lord, you know what they need. We, we hear good news from Henry and from Steve. And Lord, we wait with eagerness for the child of, of Jordan and Amy. We pray for those who, who live in fear and who are in difficult relationships. We ask that you use us to be a place and a people of safety and hope. We pray for those who are kept on the fringes of society and ignored or even worse, they're persecuted or abused. We pray for a society that honors all members, that, that we might be a society that values justice and respect for all people. We also pray that we might be a, a society that focuses on enabling and supporting and building up uh, each member so that they might be who you've created us to be. God, you're our creator. Yours is the morning and yours is the evening. Let Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine forever in our hearts and draw us to the light of your radiant glory. We ask this all in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. We come now to a, a place where we are going to enter into the Word. We're going to be looking at King Solomon, and honestly, this has been like a really, really hard week. Uh, kind of 
looking at King Solomon, uh, the amazing man he was, but also what happened to him at the end of his life. So we'll start off with a children's message. I'm going to show you a few things here. Got a pair of hockey gloves here. Now I, I've been a goalie. I love being a goalie, but I don't have time to play for a team so much. So a couple of years ago, I invested in just a regular hockey stick and a pair of gloves so that, you know what, I love going to the ponds and, and I love going onto our road and our driveway and, you know, just kind of doing some stick handling, playing a little shinny in that. And you know what, when I come here on Sunday mornings in the winter and I drive by Crana Lake, I see all these, all these young people playing hockey, playing shinny. And there's so often I wish, ah, oh, you know what, I wish I could play too. I wish I could just take my stick and my gloves and, and I could just park there and, and I could just put on my skates and I could just play with them and, and spend time with them. And even though I'm going to church to worship God, I'm, I'm still saying, you know what, I'd rather play hockey sometimes. Now, I know it feels like it's winter a lot here, but we actually have summertime as well, so I also, I also really love fishing. Even yesterday afternoon, I was at Burbank Hall and, uh, and throwing a, a lure into the water and trying to catch fish. Didn't catch anything. I'm not having much luck here in Alberta, but I love fishing. And again, some of the best fishing is done in the morning before it gets too hot. And again, there are days when I'm coming to church and, and I'm going, oh, it'd be so nice to be on my canoe or to be on the riverbank and to just do some fishing. What happens though, is that as we focus on what we want to do, we focus on all these great things and, and fishing and hockey are, are good things, they're fun things, and, and I'm sure you have lots uh, of good things as well in your life. Sometimes the good things in our lives can become small gods for us, and they become more important to us than God does. And I don't know the things that, that, that you love to do, but sometimes we have to say, God, thank you for these blessings. But please don't make them so important in our life that we forget you. Because that's what happened to King Solomon. He had so many good things. But, but he began to like them more than he liked God. And that led to our story today that we're going to look at. And God says, you know, I want your hearts. I want your lives. I want your love. I want you to want me more than anything else. So I'd encourage you to talk to your moms, dads, grandmas, grandpas, aunts and uncles and, and people that are important in your life and you know, talk to them about you know, how hard it can be sometimes to, to, to love God more than the stuff God gives us. How easy it is for us to love the good stuff God gives us, sometimes even more than God. And then maybe take some time praying together as a family and saying, you know, asking God, please help us to love you more than anything else. So let's pray, and then we're going to read the Bible, and, and we're going to have the sermon. God, thank you. You have given us so much good stuff. Sometimes we forget that it is just good stuff, and that you are more important than anything that you give us. So Lord, help us to love you more than than, than anything that you give us. Help us to love you with our whole mind and hearts and strength. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Just realized I was standing on a stair, so I hope I'm not getting my head cut off for the children's message, but uh, we make those mistakes sometimes. So, But now we're going to look at the Bible, and, uh, and Elder Peter is going to read the Bible for us. God's word comes to us this morning from uh, 1 Kings, 1 Kings 11, verses 1 through 13. And this section is entitled, Solomon's Wives. 
King Solomon, however, loved many foreign women besides Pharaoh's daughter. Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Sidonians, and Hittites. They were from nations about which the Lord had told the Israelites, you must not intermarry with them because they will surely turn your hearts after their gods. Nevertheless, Solomon held fast to them in love. He had 700 wives of royal birth and 300 concubines, and his wives led him astray. As Solomon grew old, his wives turned his heart after other gods, and his heart was not fully devoted to the Lord his God, as the heart of David his father had been. He followed Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Sidonians, and Molech, the detestable god of the Ammonites. So Solomon did evil in the eyes of the Lord. He did not follow the Lord completely, as David his father had done. On a hill east of Jerusalem, Solomon built a high place for Chemosh, the detestable god of Moab, and for Molech, the detestable god of the Ammonites. He did the same for all his foreign wives who burned incense and offered sacrifices to their gods. The Lord became angry with Solomon because his heart had turned away from the Lord, the God of Israel who had appeared to him twice. Although he had forbidden Solomon to follow other gods, Solomon did not keep the Lord's command. So the Lord said to Solomon, Since this is your attitude, and you have not kept my covenant and my decrees, which I commanded you, I will most certainly tear the kingdom away from you and give it to one of your subordinates. Nevertheless, for the sake of David your father, I will not do it in your lifetime. I will tear it out of the hand of your son. Yet I will not tear the whole kingdom from him, but will give him one tribe for the sake of David my servant and for the sake of Jerusalem, which I have chosen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Father, thank you. Thank you for these times to worship you and, and to praise you, times to be together as family and, and just focus uh, on praising you and listening to you. And Lord, I pray that all that we've done so far today to worship the prayers, the, the litanies, the, the just even hearing your greeting and your call to worship, hearing your words spoken, may they all sink deep inside of our hearts and souls and minds to, to shape us and form us more and more into who you've created us to be. And I pray that the words which will be spoken now, may they be your words and not mine. I pray this in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. These series get, get started long, long before they get preached. And, and as I put this series of, of jars of...